tuned instrument. And he came up with what he called the uh, uh, Kundalini syndrome uh, model. In other words, when this energy in the spine rises, uh, the harmony occurs where the vibration turns into the sine wave at seven cycles per second, or seven hertz, as compared to the regular disrupted pattern. And as an engineer, he looked at the body in terms of vibrating systems or oscillators. And in this case, there are five. The heart aorta system, the brain itself, a cavity in the brain, which is filled with fluid, a ventricle, and then the brain itself, the sensory cortex, and then all this results in an electromagnetic field around the head. A system which comes into harmony within itself becomes more powerful than others, and it will entrain, this is another term he used, it will entrain or pull after itself a system that is out of harmony. So once this oscillator or resonating system comes into harmony, it will trigger the rest one after the other. It's a domino effect. So as the heart pumps blood through the aorta, and he called the aorta the biggest plumbing in the body. So it's a tremendous impact on the body, and it shakes the body so that it vibrates. It hits the bifurcation into the legs, and a certain plane wave is reflected up. The next pulse comes down, and the, the plane wave and the pulse clash, and it creates a disruption in the body. When the harmonious 7 hertz vibration is set up, it seems that the heart and the lungs begin to talk to each other, and they begin to work in harmony, so that a pulse comes down and waits for the reflection to come up, and they both go up together, and then the next pulse comes down, and there is no clash occurring anymore. And the body goes into resonance, triggering the next oscillator, which is the brain. And looking at the head, again, from the point of view of engineering, it's a rigid box resting on a resilient column, which is the, the spine. What happens is, as the body goes up and down, the skull is vibrated. And the uh, brain, which is a gel-like substance is floating in a fluid, the cerebrospinal fluid, so that each time the body goes up, it's, it's hitting the skull and then goes down, and so up and down it goes, and it creates a plane wave within the brain. The brain has a characteristic called piezoelectric, which means that when it's stimulated mechanically, it develops an electromagnetic field around it, which is this field right here eventually. So this is the second oscillator, which triggers the third. This is the fluid-filled uh, cavity in the brain called ventricle. And due to this regular vibration of seven cycles, or seven hertz per second, a standing wave is created, is established in the ventricle, which uh, again creates a very harmonious uh, frequency. And this, in turn, triggers the uh, uh, sensory cortex. This is a cross-section of the brain, and this is a cross-section of the third ventricle filled with fluid. On top of the third ventricle is a drum-like surface with a bundle of nerve fiber crossing it, which connects the right and left brain hemispheres. And this is very important, because as the fluid vibrates harmoniously, it activates this um, fiber, nerve fiber, and it harmonizes the two brain hemispheres. And we know that consciousness opens up when uh, the um, uh, synchronization of the functioning of the two hemispheres occurs. And then a certain current is established in, in the sensory cortex in the lobe of the brain. And as I said before, all this results in an electromagnetic field around the head so that the head actually becomes an antenna capable of sending out and receiving information which it could not do otherwise. And in that state, uh, higher perceptions become possible. And this was Ben's theory that through the mechanism of Kundalini uh, and the resonant state of the body, higher perceptions become available. 
this is an illustration of the sympathetic resonance, how those oscillators trigger each other. If you pluck the strings of this violin, then the strings on this one will resonate without being touched. And this is how uh, the uh, oscillators relate to each other through resonance. And so, as we walk on this planet Earth, with, which is charged negatively, by the way, we are bathed in a sea of vibrations of all kinds of electromagnetic fields and uh, all kinds of frequencies, radio and others. And the ionosphere is charged positively, and the potential between the two is constantly fluctuating so that we are subjected to all sorts of influences all the time. But in that state of resonance at 7 hertz, we plug into the vibration of the Earth itself, which is stable, and it happens to be the same 7 cycles per second, so that this biosphere around the Earth resonates at the same frequency and we get locked into the frequency of the planet itself. And this is why the meditative state is such a relaxing state that some people find it difficult to come out of. Now, having become part of the vibration of the Earth, we then in turn plug into the vibration of the entire solar system. Because our Earth here is shown surrounded by all kinds of vibrations as well. There is the magnetopause, magnetosphere, plasma sheet, you name it, trapped radiation. There, is, uh, there are acoustical waves, the solar wind coming from the sun, which is also affecting the Earth. So that having, having tuned into the frequency of the Earth, we in turn tune into the frequency of the entire solar system and the sun, and so on into the cosmos. This is the cosmic connection.